In gratitude and with respect, we begin by recognizing the First Nations on whose traditional land we make our spiritual home. The Neutral. The Anishinaabe. And the Haudenosaunee. We acknowledge with regret that this history has rarely been respectful. We commit to just relationship in the present. Along with First Nations everywhere, we recognize Earth as our mother upon whose water, air, and soil we depend for our lives and our well-being. In the midst of a climate crisis, we acknowledge that, as a species, we have not acted with respect for our precious planet. We commit to learning and practicing better stewardship. Seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, or are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure, and to those who believe but are asking large questions. We welcome single people, couples, children, youth, mothers, fathers, and grandparents. Welcome to visitors and familiar friends. We welcome people of all sexual orientations, abilities, gender identities, and colors. Welcome to each who is seeking an understanding of community and what it is to, be, to accompany one another. As we come together as church, we hold one another in gratitude and pray that we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great spirit of, sorry, the great gift of spirit in us, through us, and among us. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, an official welcome to our worship service this morning. Um, wherever you're joining us from um, this, uh, this day, and um, Jaden and I hope that this is a time of spiritual nurture for you, whether that comes through a word of a comfort, a word of challenge, whatever it is, we hope that it is a time of nurture and growth for you uh, this morning. And as I mentioned, I'm pleased to be joined by Jaden uh, with Heather recuperating from surgery. They'll be helping me out with worship and co-presiding over the next uh, few weeks. If you have an announcement this morning, just type the word announcement into the chat feature and uh, we'll make sure that uh, we get you uh, on the screen. Hi, uh, Jaden. Uh, for those who are joining us on Facebook, just a reminder, there is a lag between Zoom and Facebook. So when we do participatory things in the service, it's actually already happened. So if you'd like to participate in the portion of the service where we share the blessings and concerns in our lives, feel free to type those into a comment early in the service and uh, we'll make sure it gets shared. 
If you'd like to join us on Zoom in the future, just simply use the send message button at the top of the page and we'll send you a link via email. And at the end of the service, uh, we have our, our virtual coffee time uh, where we turn on our cameras and uh, just um, talk informally. So please feel free to stay after and, uh, and to join us uh, for that. Do have a couple of announcements um, that I wanted to, we wanted to let you know about. First, next week is uh, the United Church's Anniversary Sunday. And for the last number of years, it's been a joint service of the Waterloo uh, United uh, Churches and uh, hosted by First United Church. And we're doing that again this year. Uh, full details are found in the WhatsApp, but uh, just to give you a quick overview, uh, we will be coming on to the Parkminster Zoom at 10 o'clock to do announcements, the sharing of blessings and concerns, and if we have time, a little uh, virtual uh, coffee time. And then uh, we're going to go uh, on to the First United uh, website uh, to join in the uh, four Waterloo United Churches shared worship service. But like I said, all the details are in the what's up. And another announcement that I was asked to share. Oh, did you wanna say something, Jane? Oh, oh yes, I had something that I wanted to share as well too, but I'll go after you, Joe. Okay, another announcement that I wanted to share is that somebody has uh, let me know that it is uh, Doris Yakovish's birthday tomorrow uh and so neil um would you turn on your video sure. jade, why, don't, why don't we turn off ours jade well i think you should like to play video and my mic's on <laughs> are you asking me the same neil <laughs> uh, well because you know how it works on zoom right all right well doris very happy birthday tomorrow uh so imagine everyone is singing at home Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Doris, happy birthday to you and many more. Happy birthday for your Parkminster family, Doris. Have a great <laughs> Thank day. you. Thank you, Neil. Um, and yeah, Jaden, you have an announcement. Yes. So uh, Reverend Heather sends her hellos. Uh, she is still on demand. Uh, she's doing well and just wanted to me to let you guys know and to say hello to you all. Uh, that was my first one. And then my second one, because I know people are keeping up with updates, is that I just found out that I also got accepted to Emmanuel College as well. So I'll be making a decision in the next week and we'll know which school I'm going to. That's great, Jaden. Uh, Alan Scott wanted uh, to announce that uh, she thanks the Parkminster family for holding her in the light once again. A church member has offered her the use of their pool for uh, Ellen to train uh, to train in. So Alan wanted to share that uh, with, with everyone. Um, and I see that uh, Nancy, you have an announcement. Please uh, go ahead, turn on your, there you go. It's a little bit slow, my computer this morning. So thanks for waiting. Hi, um, I just want to say thanks to the donors for your support for the Friday lunches at 1492 Landback Lane. We've been doing this monthly, so this is why I'm appearing again, because our time is coming up again um, at the end of next week. In May, I helped to drive the food down there and had a conversation with Donna there. She told me that they are really appreciate the food uh, that we send and the concrete support that it represents. They also have a goal to reduce waste, um, which is it's tricky to, um, to manage everything on a site where there is no water. Um, but they're working towards doing that. And to that end, we used some of our donation money to buy washable cutlery and dishes. So I want to do a shout out of thanks to Ben Searsma for helping out with that. And also we bought a pump for those large refillable, <coughs> excuse me, refillable water jugs. 
So again, your, your support has been wonderful and much appreciated. The next date is June 11th, and we will do one or two more over the summer as well. And if you'd like to help out, here are three ways that you can. Uh, first, continue to donate to pay for the food. This is always necessary and welcome. Um, just donate to Parkminster and identify your donation as the 1492 Land Back Lane lunches. Um, you can help with food prep. You can contact me about that if you're interested in that. And for next time in June on the 11th, we need a driver. So if you're, if you have, um, maybe if you've never been to Six Nations before and you've been curious, this is a, an opportunity to drive down there or if you just want a nice drive, it's about an hour away and it's a, it's a really lovely drive. So um, be in touch about that too if you're interested. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. I'm not seeing uh, any other requests for announcements. So friends, let's continue our time of gathering this morning. A number of theologians have predicted that the next hundred years in the theological world, but hopefully it'll filter down, is going to be finally a discovery of the immense cosmological and pastoral significance of the doctrine of the Trinity. And we're the first generation prepared to understand that because we're the first generation that had microscopes and telescopes. In other words, we now look at the galaxies and we look at atoms and we realize that everything in the known universe in between is all relational. It's all the mystery of relationship. Cir things circling around one another and the power, I mean a good atomic physicist will tell you this, the power in the atom is just like the Trinity is not in the three particles but in the relationship between the three particles and you can't capture it you can't measure it you can't name it you can't grab it it's it's all just mystery mystery it, the, the, the bigger better microscopes we get they keep discovering smaller particles <laughs> And then that particle is in relationship to another particle. We haven't gotten to the smallest yet. And we haven't gotten to the final galaxy yet. But what we do see is that the pattern of Trinity is indeed the pattern of the universe. And that what Genesis says is right. We were created in the image and likeness of God. Friends, we are made in the image of the one who exists in relationship. Friends, we are made for relationship. In that spirit, we invite you to share the peace of Jesus the Christ, the one who shows both our humanity and our divinity in relationship with each other and creation. As Neil sings, we invite you to turn on your cameras with your mics muted and say, peace be with you. Give each other a sign of peace or use the chat. The peace of Jesus the Christ be with you all. Put peace into each other's hands and like a treasure hole. Protect it like a candle flame with tenderness and fold it. Put Christ into each other's hands. He is love's deepest treasure. In love make peace, give peace a chance and share it like a treasure. And all
also with you, my friends. So I just invite you to turn your cameras off at this time. Although physically apart, we are connected by the spirit. We light candles together this morning to remind us of this truth. Just as the flames move to the currents of the air, may we know God's presence and in inspiration, challenge, comfort, and community. One, two. This day God gives me strength of high heaven, sun and moon shining, flame in my heart, flashing of lightning, wind in its swiftness, deepens of ocean, Firmness of earth. This day God sends me strength to sustain me, might to uphold me, wisdom as God. Your eyes are watching, your ears are listening, your lips are speaking. King, friend at my side. God's way is my way. God's shield is round me. God's host defends me, saving from ill. Angels of heaven drive from me always. All that would harm me, stand by me still. Rise and I thank you, mighty and strong one, King of creation, giver of rest. Firmly confessing threeness of birth. Sons, oneness of Godhead, Trinity blessed. Holy mystery. These words that form the stories of our faith have challenged and comforted countless generations. We are inheritors of a tradition that seeks the word from among the words. May we hear the wisdom of those who have gone before us. May we hear the call for us today. May we be blessed with the joining of tradition and fresh revelation that all our witness might be a blessing to those who come after us. Amen. Good morning, I'm Francine Wagner. Our reading this Sunday is taken from Paul's second letter to the church at Corneth, 2 Corinthians, Chapter 13, verses 11 to 13, from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. It is a farewell to the community, one of the few places in Scripture that speaks of God as Trinity. 
Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. May God bless this witness of faith to our understanding and living. Thank you so much, you know, and choir for all your work on that. Well, it's such a short little scripture this morning. Two little verses, a short farewell at the end of a long letter. Why? Why this short, seemingly inconsequential excerpt on a Sunday that the church sets aside to highlight one of its most significant doctrines, the Trinity. Well, the reason is that there really isn't very much on the Trinity in the Bible. There are no uh, reasoned explanations, no teachings by Jesus or Paul. The systematic theology came later what we get in the Bible are little fragments of experience. Fragments that reveal how these first communities of Jesus followers come to a new understanding of God in light of Jesus' life in ministry, in light of their experience of the holy and the sacred in and through Jesus. 
In the beginning of Christianity, before the ancient church councils, the creeds and the theologians, they're simply the experience of the people. Now, one of the benefits of not reading the Bible literally, but rather as the witness of a people, is that it simplifies things. The Trinity is rooted in people's experiences of God. The first Jesus followers continued to experience God as mystery, as transcendent creator, but they also see God in Jesus. They see a man who they see a man who incarnates God, who allows God to take on his flesh. The notion of spirit was already there in the Hebrew scriptures as, as Ruah, the breath of God, and Sophia, the wisdom of God. And they now add to that understanding of spirit by bringing in the presence of Jesus that animates their communities even after his death. Now, for those of us who care about scripture, reading the Bible as the witness of a people changes how we interact with it. We're not reading the Bible to get hard, fast, concrete facts about God. We're reading the Bible to learn from the witness of others. And there's lots to learn that helps to deepen our faith. The doctrine of the Trinity has lots of wisdom with it, in it. It resonates with my experience of the sacred. I also experience God as transcendent, a noble creator. I too see God in the life and ministry of Jesus. I experience God as spirit, a presence that calls me to cooperate with love's purpose for the world. When we see scripture as the witness of people, when we see scripture as the witness of a people, we have the wisdom of tradition to learn from and to guide us as we reflect on our own experience. But we mustn't allow it to create a box around God. Rather, scripture as the witness of a people calls us to also witness to the presence of God in our midst. Just as those first Jesus followers see and proclaim a fresh expression of God in Jesus, so we too are called to search for and proclaim fresh expressions of God in our lives and our world. If we can start to see the primary activities of faith, not as believing and defending certain things, but rather as the way we live our lives, a journey, a relationship of trust in which the mystery of God is revealed to us, then we begin to be open to fresh expressions of the sacred. Let me give you an example that takes me by surprise recently. As you may know, Jaden Jones, my co-presider today, presides at the worship service on May 2nd in light of Reverend Heather's surgery and in order to allow me to finish out my vacation. So when I get back, I'm curious. I'm curious to see how Jaden does. And so I look up the video. And of course, Jaden does a great job. But what strikes me, and I actually feel that it strikes me as I pull back from the screen, is the black candle that Jaden is using as the Christ candle. Now, later, Jaden tells me it's dark purple and they use it because it's simply what they have on hand. Regardless, though, it prompts me to ask new questions. Why can't the Christ candle be black? 
why does it always have to be white? Why are we as worship leaders and churches, can, what, what are we as worship leaders and churches communicating when one of the central symbols of the presence of the sacred in worship is always white? And we know the answer, don't we? Why can't the Christ candle also be black? red, yellow, or brown. For me, it's a fresh expression of God that is made possible by Jaden, by the opening of my eyes and heart in the past year as a result of the murder of George Floyd and taking seriously the call to engage in anti-racist work. As we go deeper into life, knowing that our knowledge is incomplete, yet firm in the faith that our God is active, new and fresh expressions of the sacred are revealed to us. And that's part of the witness of scripture. Just as when the psalmist ponders over their flock of sheep and considers what they do to protect and care for them and writes that the Lord is their shepherd, the one who leads them to nourishment and protects them. Just as those first Jesus followers experience the sacred in his life and in his life beyond death, at different times, these are all new and fresh expressions of the sacred that reveal God amid everyday life. There is great wisdom and faith in the doctrine of the Trinity. However, that wisdom is not to set our minds on one static description of God. Part of the wisdom of the Trinity is in the process of how the doctrine came about. That we live expecting to find God revealed in our lives. We ask the question daily, where is God present today? When we do this, our world opens up and we can see the image of God in those that are different from us, in creation, in work, in tears shared, in laughter, in life. We open ourselves to fresh expressions of the sacred. And as people of faith, we don't settle for static, rigid definitions of God. Because once we do that, we actually don't know God at all. Only when we don't know, do we actually know. Always be open to the mystery that longs to be revealed to us in our time and place. The other invitation of the Trinity is to witness witness to the presence of God when we encounter it, just like those first Jesus followers. They were insistent. In Jesus, we have experienced something of God. Our world is starved for God's sightings. Our world is so full of those who want to give us easy answers, who want to control and give us the illusion of control. But the world, well, but what the world needs is more surrender, more reverence, more awe, more humility. So point to the sacred <clears throat> when you see it in the land and the water, in the child and the elder, 
in the animal and the plant, in suffering and in joy. Do this and you will be a blessing to the world. May it be so. So it's called Trinity Sunday, and this answers exactly your question. If the triune poet was inviting us in, through creation, what would that invitation be? Is exactly what it would be. In the beginning, not in time or space, but in the quick before both space and time, in life, in love, in coherent grace, in three in one, in one in three, in rhyme, in music, in the whole creation story, in his own image, his imagination, the triune poet makes us for his glory and makes us each the other's inspiration. He calls us out of darkness, chaos, chance to improvise a music of our own, to sing the chord that calls us to the dance. Three notes resounding from a single tone to sing the end in whom we all begin, our God beyond, beside us, and within. As we do every week, we want to thank you for your ongoing support of the ministry and mission of Parkminster United Church and the United Church of Canada through the Mission and Service Fund. Because you give, our message of inclusion for all God's people is made real in our community, our nation, and in the wider world.
Did you know that one in five Canadians live with at least one disability? That's 6.2 million people. Disability is an issue that affects all of us. That's why the United Church of Canada partners with people from other denominations to raise awareness. People like Anglican disability activist Linda Katsuno, who is widely considered a pioneer in the field. I see myself as somebody that's a child of God. I see myself as someone who can give back. It really raises a question of mutuality. I hope that's how people see me. I hope they don't see me as somebody who is unable to do something. Many people think of the issue of disabilities as people who suffer. It's a social exclusion of people that leads to injustice. There is still so much more work to be done to participate in the liturgy. Liturgy means the work of the people. So we have every right to sort of claim our place at the table. And that has to be a theology that we, we work towards, a theology of inclusion. Your generosity supports events and education that help create healthy, strong, welcoming communities. Communities where no one is left out, where we are all seen as children of God. Let's build a world where everyone belongs. Make a gift today. Holy One, love's wisdom, creation's source, bless the gifts we offer that in anxious and fearful times the world might see through our ministry that love lives, love prevails, that the coming of your spirit isn't just a story, but the enabling of the work of God in our midst. We ask this from the holy mystery, from Jesus, the mystery in flesh and from the spirit, the mystery among us. Amen. Thank you, Jaden. So friends, let's uh, come together in prayer to reflect on and share the yearnings, the struggles and the joys of our lives. So actually Jaden, if you wanna turn on your camera, um, that instruction shouldn't have been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm wondering if you have concerns or blessings that you would um, like to share this week. If you have a, a prayer request that you're comfortable sharing on Zoom, but would prefer it not be broadcast online, just type the word private before the concern and we'll acknowledge it, but uh, not, uh, not, not, not read it out. Um, yes, and, um, yes, Lisa Lisa. yeah, go ahead, Jaden. Lisa Hecknell is starting us off with prayers for the 215 children found in unmarked graves, uh, this week at Kamloops Indian Residential School, and all others who have not yet been found, prayers for their families who aren't told the truth about the death of their children. Prayers for all whose trauma is triggered by this news. Prayers for our federal government that they may stop targeting Indigenous peoples with ongoing genocidal and discriminatory policies. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Um, that was very, very difficult news to hear this week. And uh, Roberta Hickey, um, prayers for a better tent city and their efforts to find a new home. It was announced this week that Better Tent City has found um, a new home just outside of, uh, of Resla. And now the process is um, beginning to um, integrate into that community there. Jane? Uh, Wendy Rudd, uh, my husband Rob is doing really well, recovering from his heart surgery. Thanks to everyone for your prayers and messages of encouragement. 
Uh, Laura Cudworth, prayers and peace to the families and communities of the missing 215 children made this horror transition into action from the wider Canadian community. Pat Smith, blessed to announce a new grandson for Fred and I born after Midnight Friday. Oh, congratulations. Thank you for Congrats. sharing that great news with us. That's great. Thanks, Pat. Uh, any other uh, blessings or concerns that you would like to share with one another this day? Then I'd like to begin um, our formal prayer time um, by sharing a prayer um, sent out this week by the Reverend Murray Pruden, a National Executive Minister of Indigenous, Minist Indigenous Ministries and Justice with the United Church of Canada. Let us pray. Creator, we give thanks for this day and each day you grant us life to walk on this great land, our mother. Give us the heart and strength to come together in prayer in time of mourning, reflection, and peace. The news we have heard these last few days of our relations, families, the children who have been physically taken away from us and have now been found. And with this news, we grieve for their memory, for their struggle, for their spirit. We pray for good understanding, guidance, and love for all our families and communities who will need the direction and resolution at this time. And we come together in prayer and ask for your light to guide us to be a part of that needed peace, support and resolve for everyone who is reacting to this great tragedy in our indigenous nations of this great land. Creator, be with us. Allow us to be brave, allow us to be strong, allow us to be gentle to one another, allow us to be humble, but most of all, allow us to be like the Creator's love. Peace be with us. We lift up our prayers to you in love, trust, and truth. Peace be with us all. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue together in prayer, I invite you all to close your eyes and listen. Find something that makes you feel grounded and rooted in the spirit. Maybe that's an image of something or someone you hold dear in your mind, or that means holding the hand of a loved one nearby or simply holding them. Or if you're by yourself, maybe it's feeling the pulse of your heartbeat beneath your fingertips. Great spirit, like water shapes life, endlessly flowing, changing, shifting, carving valleys into mountains, building glaciers taller than skyscrapers, moving through rivers that connect seas, oceans that connect continents. You, creator, exist within and around us you show your face in great and small ways, taking on whatever form you feel best reaches us. Like water forming into the shape of a glass once poured, you fill us up. Through you, we become more ourselves. From burning bushes to pillars of fire, a light from the clouds to a voice from the sky reminding us this is my beloved. When you created us, you knew that humans made in your image 
would only capture pieces of your ever-changing yet steadfast nature. You are made diverse to show your many aspects, different races, different genders, different sexualities, different abilities, different cultures, different languages, different environments full of natural wonders. We are brimming with duality, strong who are sometimes weak, the fearful who are stunningly brave, the traumatized who triumph with kindness. You made humankind capable of seeing your enormity in ourselves only when we assemble. You made humankind reliant on each other so we become our best when living in community. So here we are, gathered in your name, offering our fears, our pains, our gratefulness, our prayers of joys and concerns in the most private spaces of our hearts. May we embrace that your love is one of supporting us in change and promoting our adaptability and seeing the beauty and the face of the divine in our diversity. Amen. says be still so you may hear the words I whisper in your ear if you will listen you will know I'm with you always where you go God says look up and see the prize I placed you right before your eyes my beauty for wonder and rebirth God says come here I need your voice please teach my people to rejoice in who you are in what you do your life will show my love for you God says reach out the world's in need and wants a word a song or deed I send you forth to speak, to sing to act for Christ in everything Friends, our service is ended Just as the flame is a symbol of Jesus's real presence with us in worship, so the smoke is a symbol of the spirit going with us, the very being of God absorbed into our everyday living. Go out with hearts, eyes, and minds open, that you may find fresh expressions of the holy where you never imagined God dwelling before. And the blessings of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, father, son, Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all, be with you now and forever.
Amen. Spirit be upon 